Hi and welcome to another beginner's guide for Escape from Tarkov. This time I will go over some tips and tricks tied to weapons and weapon handling that should give you an upper hand in some situations or will just make your life a little easier. I also did some detailed testing that should highlight how ergonomic skill impacts your gun handling. So let's begin. First thing I will talk about is gun recoil and the tip is don't use burst fire in Tarkov. Let me explain why. When you start spraying, first shot should hit where you aim. Then the gun will jump up very high for few shots to stabilize a little lower on its final level for the rest of the spray. All of this happens because your character is doing all the recoil compensation for you. So one big takeaway from this one is you should just fully commit into sprays when you start shooting. To give yourself even more advantage in situation like that, you can also compensate with mouse drag for the initial gun jump. That way you should be pretty accurate through your whole spray. Now, if your gun has a very high recoil, then just focus on tap shooting and just never go with burst fire. Last thing is about tapping and the gun mode. Now, there is very small difference, if any, between semi-auto and full auto with that kind of shooting. So if you always forget to change the firing mode on your gun, you may as well just keep it on full auto. Let's talk more about recoil. Another way of decreasing recoil is using crouch and prone stance. Crouching will reduce bullet spread quite substantially, but the drawback is if an enemy is going center mass, he can score easy headshot on you. So I would advise to use this mode only when the enemy is not aware of your presence. Going prone will reduce recoil even more, but while prone you will also have your sensitivity lowered, so it may be hard to snap on fast moving targets. Your head will also be the first thing that can get shot in that case, but sometimes that can also work in your favor, because your overall hitbox will be smaller. On a similar vein, using tactical laser device will decrease spread of your gun when you use point fire shooting. As you can see, difference is very noticeable. Here's one good trick if you want the bonus, but you don't want to give away your position with normal laser. On some of the laser devices, you can use infrared mode that is not so easily visible and still gives tighter bullet spread. This point fire shooting recoil reduction also works when using flashlights. Let's actually expand a little bit on using flashlights. One of the meta moves right now is using them instead of laser device on your gun to blind your opponent. Have in mind that this trick works only in a very close quarter scenarios, but it's quite effective at distracting and making it harder for your opponent to track your head. Now, since guns are always held in the right hand in Tarkov, to counter this, just shoot on the right side of the light center. That way you should be able to hit thorax of your opponent. Let's also expand on crouch and going pro modes. In those stances, you will also decrease stamina drain when you aim down sights or you scoped in. As you can see, crouching gives only small benefit, but going prone will give you a lot of time to scan for enemies. Now, as a bonus thing, if you wonder if stance impacts your stamina regeneration, the answer is yes. Difference is definitely noticeable, especially when you compare prone and standing stances. Now a little surprise. Ergonomics seems not to impact your stamina drain when you aim down sides. In this example I'm using AKM with 42 and 84 ergo with very slight weight difference and it looks what is actually impacting my stamina drain in this scenario is just the weight. You'd expect to get much more ADS time with twice the ergo. To be sure this finding is correct, I actually did this testing in online raid. So unless it's a bug, the results are not thrilling. So the next natural step was testing weight and stamina drain. I found guns with the same ergo stat and much bigger weight difference. As you can see in this example, there is a lot of ADS time just because of pistol is much lighter than AK. Not sure if the barrel length or overall gun size is impacting this too, so take this information with a grain of salt. I was also wondering if my gun ergonomics or weight will impact in any way my stamina regeneration. I even tested with melee weapon. The answer is there is no difference in that case. Just to add into ergonomic skill. The two other things to get from this weapon stat is lowering ADS time and noise reduction when ADSing with higher ergo value. So I tested how much this will impact your ADS speed with those 42 and 84 ergo guns. Well that was fast. Let's go with a little slow motion so you can actually see the difference. Nothing crazy if you ask me. Let's also check gun weight to see if it has any effect on ADS speed. Again, let's look at slow motion. So yeah, gun weight can actually impact ADS time too. So it looks like it's a good practice to actually take into account gun weight when modding your guns. 
So the conclusion for ergonomic stat is that it's not worth over investing into the stat. You should try to get some points into it for decent ADS time, but the priority should be recoil reduction and then maybe lowering the gun weight. Now let's talk about mouse sensitivity. First thing, our mouse will reduce only free look sensitivity and will not impact it while you ADS. Second thing is big. You will see a big change in your mouse sensitivity depending on if you use gun with rear sight or without it. There is also a small change when using reflex sight. Good news is that those differences are consistent and are not depending on the individual guns used. One last thing, be aware of guns that don't have mountable rear sight part. Sensitivity on those will be as without rear sight and the only thing to counter this is using reflex sight. Next thing is stop loading some of the guns. It works for guns like SKS, M700 or Mosin. This can be a very useful trick to know about early in the wipe when you will not have access to many magazines for some of the guns. All you have to do to top load gun is just have some loose ammo in your rig or pocket and then press and hold reload key. Now use your scroll wheel on the mouse to select ammo and you will start top loading the gun. This trick can also be used with only one magazine that is inside your gun. Then all you have to do is just press reload key to start automatically top load the gun with ammo from your rig or pocket. Now this tip is also useful for selecting specific magazine you want to load into your gun. Let's say you have one magazine with mediocre ammo and another with a good ammo. Just use your mouse wheel to pick the one you want and you're ready to rumble. I will make another off topic here and explain reloading magazine priority. When you press reload it looks like the game will prioritize bigger magazine size first and it will go like that from the top row from the left to right and then bottom from left to right. There is a little more into this. Actually game will choose magazine with the biggest ammo count inside the magazine as you can see right now on the screen. Since we are on reloading, let me show how you can actually put ammo inside of the guns in your stash screen. For instance, shotguns, Mosin or SKS have internal magazines. So all you have to do is just inspect the gun, take out the internal magazine in your stash, drag the ammo on the mag and voila. Now we will start raid with fully loaded gun. One more thing you can actually do is to drag ammo on the gun itself, so you will have it already chambered. So in case of Mosin, you will have 6 shots instead of 5 after the raid start. So using page up, page down to set zeroing is probably common knowledge. But you also have to remember that zeroing works for the default bullet speed on your gun. Now, if you will use bullet with much different velocity, then your zeroing will simply not work. Great example of this is US ammo for AK545 series. As you can see, no matter the zeroing, the US ammo will hit the wall at the same spot. Next tip is for all the mozing men out there. Sometimes when sniping, you want to see where your bullet hit, but your character instantly goes for bolt action. What you can do is just hold your left mouse button after the shot, so the animation will be put on hold. When you release the button, animation will proceed. The fact that you can use weapon presets to mod your gun shouldn't be forbidden knowledge, but there is a useful trick you can use if you mod your guns in stash and encounter some problems. For instance, there are plenty of magazines for M700. As a new player you may be wondering why some of them don't fit the gun. Well, they are named after the chassis type, so that probably makes a lot of sense now. Quick way of checking what magazine will fit your gun is editing preset on the gun. As you can see, it shows you all the info you wanted right away. For another example, let's take AKM and B33 dust cover. As you can see, you are notified that you can't use it with the current foregrip. Problem is that finding the right combination may be a trial and error. So if you want to save yourself some time, just use the weapon preset and you can see right away what will be the right choice. We're talking about modding, so here is one quick trick to find some of the mods if you don't like using weapon presets menu. It's all about using link search option. As you can see when used on the gun, we are missing some muzzle options. Answer is using link search on the gun barrel. Now we can see muzzle devices options for the gun. Next part worth using link search on is gas block, so we can find compatible hand guards. Another step is to actually use link search on the handguard to find some foregrips. Then we have searching on the dust cover, so that way you can see all the sight options for the gun. Just don't forget there are also some sights that require special mounts. For instance, one of my favorite assault scopes right now is ACOG. It's kinda hidden in menus, so you have to use link search on this mount. One more tip about this one is you can actually also mount Trigicon RMR on top of the ACOG. So that's another option for multi-purpose assault scope. Next tip is more of a warning than actual tip. Don't ever run and throw the nade at the same time. Your nade will land under your feet and you are gonzo. 
Okay, let's talk about using right sign blind fire. This is a very great mode to use to scan building you want to enter, to bait some shots or just to kill people from safe position. The key to proper utilization of this trick is to go over the corner at 45 degrees angle and then press in the blind fire button. Now you can move right and left to adjust your aim or just try aiming with your mouth. Another tip with this one is you can actually blind fire grenades like this. Very useful thing in some situations. All you have to do is just press blind fire with weapon equipped and then press throw nade key. Last tip in this one is also about grenades. There is a second throwing mode for them, the under throw. All you have to do is bind your nade, then pull it out into your hand by pressing the key and press right mouse button. To throw you just press right mouse button again. This can be good to use if you want to throw nade from high ground or not far away from you. Also don't worry about pin removal. Right now grenades blow up only after they are thrown. Alright, that's all in this one. I hope you enjoy it and learn something new. Next video will be about movement tips and tricks, so if you are interested consider subscribing. Thanks for watching and see you in raids.